Hey everyone, welcome to the Curious Girl Diaries podcast. I'm Layla London, aka The Curious Girl. Now just to let you know, this podcast is not suitable for work. It's also not suitable for anybody under 18. But the rest of you consenting adults, let's get ready to talk about my sex life, sex in general, and everything in between in explicit, raunchy, fun detail. All right, here we go. First of all, I don't think that the word jealous or jealousy is a, is a nasty, negative, bad word. And I think that if you care about somebody, that you're not going to necessarily be jumping up and down about the fact that they're sticking their penis in some other lady's vagina. You know, for women, I wish other women would just stop nitpicking other women because I'll tell you what, it does not come from the guys. All right. Hello, ladies. This is, well, hopefully what I will be predominantly a ladies only podcast. Men, if you want to listen, you can feel free. But it has been a while since I did, I think uh, sometime last year I did girls only or whatever. And I I thought, you know, since I'm, here we are, October, and I'm going to be shutting this down on December 31st, I thought I need to do one more, you know, podcast just for the ladies. I mean, I have a lot I want to say, and I got to get some stuff off my chest because a lot has changed. Things have, you know, some things have changed, some things haven't, but I just, there's some things I need to, I just need to convey here. So, um, I want to get to that. The, um, I'm going to start with, you know, predominantly, I know that my listening audience is mostly men, although it's not quite as high as I thought it was as far as the split. It's about a 60-40, according to my, you know, the, the, the information I get from the website. It's all generic. Trust me, I don't know who anybody is. I don't know anything about you guys, but it does, it, you know, it does say like male or female, I, how it how it extrapolates that information, I have no idea, but it's roughly 60, 40. Now that's higher than I thought. And, you know, I think the reason that the, as far as the female population, the reason I thought it was less is because I don't hear as much from the females. Men, I, I guess, you know, I'm a woman on here. I'm talking about sex. I'm, you know, uh, talking, whatever, talking naughty stuff and men gravitate towards that or they're going to be a little more vocal or reach out to you. So the women, while there's women listening, the ones that actually I get interaction from, you know, I can tell you that percentage is probably more like 80, 20. So probably I get 20% of questions and comments and correspondence and, and things like that will be from women. And then the remaining 80% will be from men. So that's why I always kind of thought it was skewed a lot higher. But, you know, when I just, oddly enough, the other day, I was just kind of looking at um, some of the, some of the, some of those websites, the statistics got kind of put in front of me and, and I was like, oh, wow, that's kind of interesting. I thought, (laughs) I seriously thought, you know, that it was a lot lower for the women, but I'm glad that women are listening. You know, when I originally started this social experiment, I was really hoping it would be just all women, you know, that would, that would be following me and that (laughs) they'd be wanting to do, you know, kind of like their own sexual road trip or in some way that this would be interesting and informational to them. It's something I would gravitate towards. But I guess I can, on that note, I can see myself really listening to some sex podcasts because I do listen to sex podcasts, um, but, uh, you know, from other, from other females, because I'm, I'm, of course, I'm curious and interested in what they're doing since I'm doing it too. Um, but I don't, and, and I, and just, just, I guess, put it into perspective. You know, I, I don't send them messages or interact with them, so I get it, but. How, but but I've got some questions here from some women that I think are actually pretty poignant, and I want to, and some issues that I want to address, and then we'll talk about you know some other topics too. So the first question that I have here 
uh, from a female follower is um, basically it was, it's regarding jealousy. And she just says, you know, how do you je- jealousy, you know, how do you handle that? And how do you not get jealous? And this is in the context of, you know, because I'm seeing multiple guys and nobody's in a one-on-one committed relationship, you know, everybody's allowed to kind of do what they want and see other women. And I guess, how do I not get jealous about that? And, you know, I think I've probably addressed this somewhat. Uh, I've sprinkled in little comments and tidbits along the way about this, but it's a really good question. So let me just kind of hit the nail on the head with that. Um, First of all, I don't think that jealous, the word jealous or jealousy is is a nasty, negative, bad word. And I think that if you care about somebody, that you're not going to necessarily be jumping up and down about the fact that they're sticking their penis in some other lady's vagina. You know, I mean, you don't have to, that doesn't have to fire your rockets. You know, (laughs) you don't have to be excited about that. Um, And I think the converse is true for men. You know, they don't have to be, it's not like it has to, they have to like the fact that, you know, I'm seeing other guys. Uh, but I think where the, what the thing about that word or those, those sentiments or those feelings is how do you respond to those? If you turn into a big jackass about it and you start doing passive aggressive things or you're, um, not handling it well, then, you know, that's bad. That's when it gets bad. And so, so to say that I don't get jealous, you know, in the context of, uh, oh, does that make me, am I thrilled about that thought? Um, that's not true. You know, that, that's not true. I don't like, um, knowing about that stuff. It's interesting. Do you know the one person that it bothered me the most with was Clark. And I don't know why. And actually, I'm having dinner with him tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to sushi. So <laughs> um I don't it was very strange. You know, and this was um because I, he's one of the very first people I connected with. And when I, um, and and maybe it was more so because it was in the beginning and things like that. Um, and I just was a little less, maybe a little, little out of my element, so to speak. Um, it bothered me. I mean, not, not, not in a, again, not in a freaky, stupid kind of a way, but just, um, what I re- what I realized was, uh, and he kind of, I think, you know, I think I just kind of said it, you know, like, well, maybe you'll just keep that stuff to yourself. I just didn't want to hear it. It's okay that it's going on. You know, I just didn't want to hear it. Now, it really does depend on, you know, whom I'm, what context we're, just, we're talking about that with. I mean, so as an example, like, um, and, it, and this isn't, by the way, this isn't really a reflection on how I feel about the person. Um, there could just be different things that either, you know, it sets well or it doesn't. And I, I, I'm not sure what it is. Again, let's just kind of shelve the, shelve the basic premise of this is like the feelings part is okay. It's how you handle it where I, that's where I think the word jealousy and, you know, that's why it becomes so negative and when it gets a bad rap. But, um, so with like BE, you know, I, I like a lot of the guys, you know, like in BE in particular, like, I like to, we like to, I like to talk about it, you know, like, um, I don't know. It's, it's fun. It's like, it's like you have a confidant, like, oh, you're doing this, I'm doing that. And, you know, and then we come together and there's just a lot of, you know, respect and caring and, you know, love for each other in a, you know, in a, just like really great friendship and just a bond. And it doesn't, it doesn't bother me, you know? And I think the people like, so when I see these swingers couples and things like that, I think that's kind of the key, the people that are 
that are in that mode and that can do it, they're, for whatever reason, they found a person that they can be on this higher, I don't level or frequency with it just, it's like, it's a, it's okay. You know, like you really don't, you understand and know that in no way does that detract from or how that person feels about you. And maybe it's about a confidence thing in the relationship that you have. And so, you know, again, I'm referencing PE, you know, like I feel like we have a really strong, open kind of connection. And I don't, I'm not worried about anybody that's going to shake that foundation. And so maybe, you know, maybe the, maybe another way to kind of explore this is that, you know, you're more likely to have those feelings with someone that you're, excuse me, unsettled with. And that where you don't know particularly, you know, how, how things are and you're not stable and solid with them. So if you're, and, and you could be liking them a lot, right? So let's go back to the, you know, the, the, the Clark scenario, you know, in the beginning when I first started doing this and I'm seeing him and I'm like, oh my God, this guy's so hot, you know, um, and I'm really liking him and just clicking with him and connecting, you know. Um, the thought of him seeing someone else, uh, bothered me. Now, now, you know, it wouldn't because it's just different. You know, I, I, I know him better now. I'm more connected to him. I feel really secure in, you know, whatever, you know, in, in our, I guess our core basic friendship, you know, just our, the bond that we have, you know, the the openness and the closeness that I feel like I just don't worry. I don't worry. So I think there's a, you know, that's kind of the defining thing is that, you know, if you find yourself kind of getting out there a little spun and, and you're taking those basic feelings. It's okay to say, I don't, I don't really, I'm not wild about that thought. I don't like that. Or that makes me uncomfortable or you, you know, no, I just don't want to know. Nothing wrong with that. That doesn't make somebody weak or, you know, or, or, or weird. It's just, if you, again, now, if you take that and then you start reacting to it in a way that's inappropriate or, you know, bitchy or manipulative or weird towards the other person, you know, that's when you got to, that's when you say, eh, I got a problem. You know, I can't handle this well. And so I, I got to figure out a solution to that. But so, you know, the question, core question here is how do I not get jealous? It's not that I don't get jealous in the sense that where I'll feel like, or I haven't felt you know, um, like, yeah, I'm not wild about that idea (laughs) or that's too much information. I just don't need to know, you know, and I handle it that way. Um, but you know, does, so if, you know, if I, if I can take it to the screen, have I ever felt like just out of my mind, crazy where I'm acting a fool and, you know, lashing out at that person or someone else because, you know, of believing or knowing that they're, um, seeing someone else. No. Or even thinking that they are. No, no, I don't, I've, I don't, I've never taken it to that extreme, but, um, you know, again, I, all I can say is if you, if you find yourself in that situation, it's, you've got to just, that's kind of when you really got to take a hard, hard look in the mirror. Because it's not about the other person. It's about you. It's about you. And, you you know, you have to, you'll have to kind of do a little soul searching on that one. But um, it's, for me, in relationships that are open, it's about managing 
managing the feelings and knowing kind of where your limitations are with each person. And they're, they'll be different with each person. So I hope that, I hope that helps. Okay. Um, next question. How did you find all these good guys? Well, that's kind of interesting. I, I won't talk about the method, but more so it's, I think the kind of the way to look at this is how, because they're all good. I mean, you know, some of them are stinkers, but <laughs> some of them have been stinkers, right? But, and I've talked about that, but for the most part, yes. I mean, I, I really do have this great ability to attract these amazing guys. I mean, seriously, like, I can't tell you I how lucky I feel and how the hell these guys are just running around, you know, without being snatched up and pinned down and married, you know, I don't know. But I'll tell you this, I actually believe that when, when, and, and this, this is just, I don't want this to come off any a way that it's not, but when people say, how do you find these good guys? They're attracted to me. So I do actually, for the most part, have a, you know, throughout my whole life, have, have an uncanny ability to attract a good guys. And that's really kind of by the standard that you set for yourself. And you know how they say water seeks its own level and, you know, things like that. Um, what I believe about this, and I, I want to talk about this a little bit more, so I'll answer this kind of briefly and then really kind of dig in later, is um, that you really just have to be the kind of woman that is so, I guess, for lack of a better word, amazing, that you know men are just drawn to that. And men are drawn to a lot of different things, but if you... Put yourself up on a pedestal and believe and know that about yourself. Uh, people are going to be, there's men, they are dialing into that frequency. Trust me. They will, you know, they will see you coming. You emit uh, a, a, a radar, uh, like I said, a frequency, uh, a, a smell, a hormone, a chemical. I don't know. They will zero in on it. You know, you're going to be, if you have just basic level self-esteem, <laughs> I'm going to say, you're kind of going to be head and shoulders a lot above a lot of other um, people because, you know, you're going to walk in and you're going to be like a breath of fresh air. So that's, I don't know. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, that's been my secret little weapon and it seems to work. That's about all I can tell you, but I think it really, you know, you have to be the kind of woman that is attracting these men and you have to be, you know, put down on your, like, like what you think a great woman is and what you strive for and what you want to be. And then, you know, work on being that. And, and as you, as you become that, and as you are that, um, you'll find the guys that you're attracting are on that same level too. So, or, or they're reaching for that and that's good too. But, you know, I mean, they, like this is, that's, if they're drawn to that kind of person, um, you know, I mean, and some now, I mean, again, some men are drawn to, um, and I, you know, it's not like a, like a, a bimbo type of scenario, right. Where a woman's just kind of always dressed trashy, always, um, leads with her body, not her brains. And, um, you, you're not going to get that kind of guy. I mean, you know, you, or, or, or you are, or, or again, or maybe that's the, you know, that's the kind of guy you want to catch. You kind of have to, it's like, it's like fishing. You got to use the right lure, but you know, male things or, or, or animal species are attracted to shiny, bright, whatever. <laughs> you got to make yourself the shiny, bright thing <laughs> that the kind of man you want is attracted to. And, you know, and, and then, you know, they'll start kind of showing up. So 
I don't know if that was vague or not, but I think I'll get into it a little bit more as we as we go along here in this podcast. Um, and then the next question here is, it says, um, and I only did three. I just did these three because uh, I kind of thought these were big. I wanted to touch on some of the bigger issues, you know, and not, I guess, more universally uh, issues that could be universal for women, not not more super, super specific, finite that only apply to certain ladies. But um, it says, I don't have the same body type as you. How can I feel confident when I don't fit the typical beauty standard? Well, you know, oh, this is, uh, I think okay, okay, this is a this is a universal issue. I think for women, um, so forget about what forget about what my body looks like and what your body looks like and what the girl next to you her body looks like. For some reason, uh, women are so judgmental, and I'll put myself in that category. I have been harsh on myself about physical appearance and things like that. Um. And the only, you know, the only thing I can say about that is, first of all, thank goodness the beauty standards have changed. I mean, you know, they do change and evolve over time. But there is always, I know what you're saying, there is always kind of some stupid standard or, you know, kind of what you typically see. And I get it. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I see this stuff too. Um, But, you know, every, every woman, I believe on the planet nitpicks herself. I've never come across one that doesn't. Now that for me is absolutely at a minimum. And here's why, because a long time ago, I just realized, you know, I have what I have. And I have a certain body type. Here's the funny story. Okay, let me tell let me tell you this. You know how um you know how right now those Brazilian butt lifts are in? Like everybody wants a big bubbly juicy butt. Well, I don't have a big, big bubbly juicy butt. And the only way I could have one of those is if I genetically alter my body. So (laughs) I went in when, oh, oh, I talked about a while back when I did the vaginal tightening, you know, when I did that laser and I went in and they did the, you know, they did that. I never went back for more sessions, which reminds me, I, I might be kind of fun to do that. But at any rate, um, when I went in and just, you know, I had my group on, remember when I talked about, I had my group on, I went in and did the, did one little treatment. I don't know if it, it seemed like it helped. Um, who knows? I was already tight anyway, but I'm like, I got a group on, may as well do it. Can't hurt. Right. Wouldn't hurt to be even tighter than tight. Right. Um, but at any rate, so I went in and, and they said, well, is there anything else? You know, of course, this is what they do. They get you. They, they're like, well, is there anything else you want to have to talk to the doctor about today? I'm like, yeah. You know, he's, I'm sitting there and up on the screen, he's flashing all of these like Brazilian fat transfers, you know, like, okay, we'll take, we'll make your butt like super, super big and round and curvy. Um, and I'm like, you know, like I kind of think on my smaller frame, that would look kind of hot, right? So <laughs> if I had a little bit more of a, of a booty. And <laughs> so I, I go and to, to, you know, to have the guy look at me and they're sitting there and they're like pinching legs and arms and st- my stomach. And they're like, at, w- where, and they're looking at me like, well, where do you think we're going to take this fat from? And I'm going, well, you know, well, what about right here? This little spot right here. What about that? And they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like you need like a lot. We need to transfer a lot of fat because some of it's going to stick and some of it's not. Some of it's going to die off basically. Like they're going to harvest it and stick it in there. And then, you know, I guess only a certain percentage of it survives and sticks. 
So you could spend, you know, in theory, you could spend all that money and have none, none of it really stay. Um, so the, when the way the doctor comes in and, you know, cause the assistants are like, I don't, I don't know if you're really a candidate for that. You know, maybe you'd need like implants. And I'm thinking like, I'm not going to get some fucking implants in my ass. But anyway, so he comes in and he says, well, you're going to need to gain weight. And then we can, and I'm like, what? Oh no, 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 no. That's, I can't do that. That's not going to happen. Like, I exercise, you know, I run, I go to yoga. It's like, this. I, that's how I keep my mental sanity. What are you talking about? He's like, well, you're going to have to stop that. And you're going to need to eat, like, eat to gain weight. And going, oh, okay. So anyway, that idea went out. But the, here's the point. The point is this. You know, I have what I have. And quite frankly, this body has moved me around in my life. It has been good to me. It, you know, it's gotten me through two marathons, one of which, you know, was not so, you know, just it's tough, you know, and, and carried me through the stresses of life and life events and every, you know, just everything. And so I think when I was probably about, um, you know, late twenties, I just, you know, realized, um, that, you know, I have what I have and I don't have a super curvy figure, you know, and, um, I'm, I'm not built like that. None of the women in my family are built like that. And, you know, and, 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 the, I think the, here's the interesting part about that though, is that as we're getting into this stuff is that, um, you know, for, for women, I wish other women would just stop nitpicking other women, because I'll tell you what, it does not come from the guys in doing this and putting myself out there for two years. And I put very few pictures of myself actually out there. Um, but, but guys do want to know, like, well, what do you look like? What does your body look like, right? So I've posted a few pictures. Not even, I don't even think five. Well, maybe, maybe five. Maybe, I mean, like full body pictures, uh, not five, not even five, maybe two, you know, two or three um, over two years. Um, but the point is about that is that... Um, I've never had a man criticize my figure. You know where the criticism comes from? Other women. And quite frankly, that to me is unacceptable. It's disheartening, not in the sense that, you know, you're going to change the way I feel about myself. You're not going to change the way I feel about myself. I look... I look the way I look and you know what? I know the response to that by men. And since I'm predominantly interested in them, the response to that by men is very, very favorable. So, you know, as far as, um, that whole, uh, you know, making me, me personally feel bad, that doesn't happen. But what's interesting in that is that, um, is that, that's where it comes from. I mean, really, it's not, that's coming from other women. You know, and you, you hear all this stuff about, you know, accept our bodies and we need, we need, you know, no body shaming and, and we should tear down women and blah, 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 blah. You know what? That's true. And it starts and stops with women. So if you don't, if that's what you're saying, and that's the kind of shit that you're posting and preaching on your, you know, in throughout your life, and you're saying that, or, you know, you're posting that crap on your Tumblr, then fucking live it. Don't be a hypocrite. You know, don't, don't rip other women down about the way they look. You don't have to like it. But it's interesting that that's where, I mean, I can just tell you in this whole two years, 
Not a one negative comment from God, from a man. Never. Not once. It's only ever it's only ever come from other women. And to be honest, obviously I know what that's about. It's about it's not about does somebody think I'm does, does that woman think I'm too skinny or I'm too you know um this that or the other or that I'm that that my figure's disgusting and repulsive? No. It goes back to our first question. It's about jealousy. It's about being jealous about what, you know, and it's just, it's really ridiculous. So, um, you know, and through the, but by the way, I'll just say this too, through the course of that, uh, the one thing as I've found, you know, just going through this process and when I'm putting myself out there, just having people that don't like you or that say negative things, I will, I never have, and I never will. I'll go on record on saying this. I will never get in the gutter with another woman and fight about figures, our our physical figures. Like, you know, if someone's assault, saying you're, you know, you're unattractive or you have, you know, they're, they're, if they're, if they're ripping on your figure, I absolutely, that's like, that is getting in the mud. I will not get in the the mud with you. I won't, I won't go there. I'm not going to, um, you know, and so a lot of the, um, the, where my silence and where I don't respond to people or comments like that is it's just because I absolutely, you know, will not respond in kind regarding that subject matter. I won't say, you know, the converse, well, you're, you're a fat pig or you need to eat less or why don't you get on the treadmill a little bit long? I mean, you know, not even, that's like, it's so stupid and ridiculous. And, and I, I just don't look at other women that way. I don't look at it like, um, I'm not looking at their figures to tell me who they are or about them. I'm listening to what they say and what they do. That tells me whether they're attractive or not. You know, that's that's what I'm zeroing in on. So, you know, for for the person that asked this question, I'm sorry, we know I kind of went off on a tangent there, but I it is one of the things that's uh, become it's on my on my forefront on my radar. A uh, very interesting subject matter is just. You know, like I said, literally from this social experiment, I can tell you in two years, not one comment about my figure in a negative way from a man, not one. And they're, they can comment, they're free to comment just like any, just like anybody. It's never been negative. It's only, the only responses that have been negative have come from females. And that says nothing about me and my figure, and it says everything about them. So, you know, for the person that's interested in their, you know, figure, your figure is who you are. And I would say, learn to love it. And, you know, I'm all about being healthy and healthy lifestyle for whatever that means for you. Because trust me, men don't care. They don't care. The guys that date me date women with other body types that are completely the opposite of mine. They're not drawn to those women, you know, because, I mean, they appreciate the confidence and the you know, and the kind of the who of who that girl is. I mean, that's what they're drawn to. It's not their, it's not their body per se. And so that's the only, the only people that, the only ones that are stuck on that really are females. So, um, you know, have a, have, 
have an honest talk with yourself about where this comes from and why you feel that way. And there's nothing wrong with it, but trust me, it starts and stops with you. And you're the only one that has any control over it. You can lose weight. You could have a, you know, firmer ass, a flatter stomach, and you could still have that inner dialogue, you know, or whatever the, whatever the, wherever those feelings are really coming from, you're still, you'll take those with you. You could be a perfect 10 and still have that. So it's just, it's not about, you know, it's not about the out outside package. And there's, there's been times in my life, you know, especially when I was younger and when I didn't get that, like I look back on my photos and, you know, I mean, I was even, <laughs> if the, if the haters think I'm skinny now, I, this is the heaviest I've ever been. <laughs> we're, we're kind of a, we're a little, we're a bit of a stickly uh, pack. <laughs> so the women in my family are, and, um, I mean, you know, I've, it's funny people get teased for being, you know, too big. I mean, you know, I, when I was younger, it was just like skinny, 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 and, and tits, (laughs) tits on sticks. But, you know, and, and, and I, you know, back then, and I look, I look back and I go, God, you know, like, I'll look at something and think, I didn't appreciate how great I looked. I did not, you know, it's too bad. It's too bad. I didn't, that I didn't value the body that I was walking around in back then, you know? And again, if you're in good health and your body's carrying you through life, you really give it some respect, you know, and yourself and, and go easy on yourself. And if anybody comes along and is judging you for that, I mean, fuck them. Seriously, give them the fucking middle finger. And I mean, give them the Layla middle finger. And that's where, you know, you have my permission to tell them to just, you know, fucking suck it. And you don't need to address them, but you just have to show them that, Hey, this bullshit, your insecurities. I'm sorry. You don't put those on my doorstep, babe. They don't work for me. That just doesn't work. You got to try something else. That's not the button to push. It's not working. So I hope that helps. And I know I spent a lot of time on that, but I'm, I mean, I'm passionate. This, I am passionate about this issue. I don't like, I don't like, you know, I don't like the fact that it's so submissive in the, in the, in the sense that, you know, there's all this, oh, don't body shame. Don't body shame. Women are saying, don't body shame us. Don't body shame us. Hey, it starts and stops with us and other women are doing it to other women. Do you get that? You don't want, you don't want to be body shamed. Don't fucking body shame anybody. And that means yourself, put yourself on that list too. But that's where it's going to start and stop. And, and when, when other women stop picking on other women, that's where, you know, that's when it'll be over. Cause trust me, it is not the guys. They don't give a shit. You know, if you're, if you're happy, bubbly, nice, friendly, sweet, and you want to suck their cock, fuck, they're going to love you. (laughs) All right. There you go. Um, Now, the next thing I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, again, get on my soapbox to the ladies about is, we'll go back to the, um, we'll go back to the, this is, I think, is encompassing of all of these questions, one, two, and three, the jealousy, how you find these good guys, and, and just your overall, like, image of yourself. I'm going to tell you, this is the secret. Here's the Layla secret right here. And I thank my dad for this. And I mentioned this, actually my parents, but my, my, you know, just, it doesn't matter who says it to you. I, if you hear it from me and it's the first time you've ever heard it, apply it. Okay. But it's this kind of basic principle about, you know, Put yourself on a fucking pedestal. I mean it. You know, don't wait for some guy to come along and put you up there. Girlfriend, get your ass up there. Like up on that pedestal. That's where you belong. You are something to reach for. You're something that guys should be fucking fighting for. They should see you and be like, oh, I want that. 
if you present yourself as the low hanging fruit, that's all you're ever going to be. Seriously. And you get to decide about where you land on that spectrum. You do. Not anybody else. You do. So, you know, it's basically having, you got, you know, where does, where does all this self-esteem come from? And, you know, how, how getting these good guys. And it's because I set the standard and they rise to the occasion. And if they don't, they're gone. Period. That doesn't say anything about them. That only says, I, in my life, as a woman, expect a certain thing and want a certain thing and need a certain thing. And I'm going to make sure that because I want, need, and expect certain things, I will get those. I will create those. I will attract the type of person that's going to meet, you know, mesh well with me. That's not saying it's a one-way street. Of course it isn't. This is not being selfish. This is about putting, you know, knowing your self-worth. The problem is, and I don't know why, for some reason, again, you know, women, we seem to have this more than men where we don't know our self-worth or we lower the bar so that some low-hanging fruit picker can pick us, (laughs) right? That is not good. No, no, no. Don't do it. Please don't do it. It's ridiculous. I can't stand it. Makes me ill. Really, literally makes me ill. Stop going outside yourself. Focus on you first, what you want, what you need. And, the, and, and trust me, then the right guys are going to be gravitating towards that. But, you know, it's like, again, it's like, you know, look at nature. The low hanging fruit gets picked off. The weak, weakest of the pack gets picked off. <laughs> you're not going to be appreciated. You might be eaten and devoured for a couple of meals, but you're not the girl. You're not the woman that ultimately... These guys are going to want, or, or, or the guy, you know, that you think you have in your mind with all these wonderful qualities, you know, he's, he's, he's going for the girl on the pedestal. That's where you need to be, you know, step up there. And what I was saying about, you know, my, about my, what my dad taught me was this interesting little thing about basically saying, you know, you know what? You can say, because I, I would say all these things. I want this, I want that, la, 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 you know. And he just, you know, he'd say, you know what? You can say anything you want with a smile on your face. And basically, that means you can tell somebody to fuck off. You can tell somebody no. You can tell somebody that's inappropriate and not okay with me. You can tell somebody I am, this is not my standard, this is. As long as you, you know, just do it with a smile on your face. Do it being this pleasant, nice, beautiful, attractive, powerful woman. And you can have and say anything you fucking want. (laughs) And he's right. He's so right. I'm telling you, it has worked for me my whole entire life. That and problem solving. <laughs> I get that and my problem solving skills. So uh, I just, you know, I just, I just think that, that ladies, we, you know, we're ultimately the ones that are in control of ourselves and we overcomplicate things because we have all these emotions and that's great. We have all, we have all these emotions and everything and, and it's wonderful because we're diverse and we're caregivers and we're all these, we're all these things, but 
sometimes we got to get out of our own way. Men are so much simpler and easier and and we really kind of make it so hard on them. And and then, you know, and then we start pick tearing down each other and, you know, it's just it's not productive. So if you're finding any of your energy going in that direction and you're not just focusing on you and you know, kind of making yourself into the best partner, you know, in whatever context that's going to take on for someone else, you know, the best type of female that you can be, the best person you can be, you're really just wasting your time. Just wasting your time. You're just going, you're like a one-legged deck. You're just going in circles. You're not going to know, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to get the result you want. And then you're going to be frustrated and then you're going to start again. That's when you go start. You're frustrated. You're lashing out. You're looking outward. You're blaming other women. You're blaming, you know, I mean, society and all that, you know, all that stuff. Stupid. Don't do it. So avoid the jealousy. Um, and, and, and put your, you know, put yourself on a pedestal and, and you'll find there's guys that are, you know, the guys that are going to come along and and reach for that those are the only ones you're going to see you're not going to see the the again the the guys that want to pick the low hanging fruit they're just too they're too far down there you're not even going to they're not even going to come by <laughs> they're they're like ah too much work they're going to go for the easy ones you know and and uh especially to ladies if you have daughters or even if there's guys that are listening to this god if you have daughters tell them to put them you know Tell them, put them, put them on a pedestal. Tell, it's, this is never bad behavior. You'll never go wrong when women think highly of themselves and when they have a high self-esteem. You just won't. I'm not, that's not, that's not teaching somebody to be snobby and inconsiderate and uncaring. No, it's not what I'm saying at all. You're teaching them to have their shit together, know who they are, handle their, you know, a great partner and you're not going to, and you know, and, and, and they won't be, you're not going to worry about them bringing home some fucking deadbeat loser. So there you go. There's my public service announcement. Um, I hope, I hope that this podcast has been interesting to women. Like I said, I've only got two more months of it and then I'm going to be done. And Truly, the initial uh, focus for me when I started this was obviously for me. It was a personal thing for me. But then I really wanted, I was really hoping other women, you know, would pick up on it and appreciate it and 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 in some way see a small part of themselves in me or something that maybe was <clears throat> inspirational and and you know, they could, they could, there was some sort of takeaway. So whether that has been or hasn't been, I don't know, but it's still my, you know, it's still my genuine, uh, wish. And, um, I hope that even if it's just, even if it's just on an entertainment level (laughs) that I've been entertaining. All right. There we go. Thanks, ladies. Um, please, please, between now and the end of the year, don't be shy. You may send me your your questions and comments. And um, I, you know, I love all that. Thank you so much for listening. And um, you know, have 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 great put yourself on a pedestal, have some good sex, get what you want, you know, want and need. All right, take care. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. And if you like what you hear, refer me to a friend. And make sure you're following me on social media. Also, go to the website, thecuriousgirldiaries.com, and join my subscribers only list for access to exclusive content. And as usual, questions or comments, you can always email me at curiousgirl at thecuriousgirldiaries.com. <laughs>